What is going on guys? I thank you all for joining me and today I'm going to show you how to tie two variations of the uni knot. And I know there's a million videos out there that show you how to tie it, but I haven't seen anybody go over how to make the weedless version of it. It's very simple, so let's go ahead and get started. Starting off, we're going to take our line and run it through the line tie, just like so. And if you're not familiar with it, give yourself about six to eight inches of line to work with. What you're going to do next is make a loop, just like that. Easy to form, just kind of roll it back on itself, just like so. Take that loop and lay it parallel to the standing line going back to the rod tip. Once they're laid next to each other like so, take your tag end, bring it around the standing line, back through the loop. You're going to do that multiple times. I say multiple because the diameter, the type of line, and the slickness of the line will determine how many times you go back and around through the loop. If you're using six pound test monofilament, you might want to go six or seven times. If you're using 80 pound fluorocarbon, you may only be able to get four, maybe five, before it gets tough to cinch down. And if you're using some of the newer slicker braids like Fireline Ultra 8, Nanofill, or gliss, you have to go at least nine, otherwise it'll pull right out. So for this example, we're gonna go four turns since it's a fairly uh, large diameter line. This is 200 pound test Kevlar. And go like that. You're gonna cinch it down lightly. You're gonna moisten the line now before you draw it up. And when you're drawing it up, you don't wanna just pull on that standing line. You wanna kind of just grab the standing line and then pull this section of the knot down to the line tie. You don't want to be putting unnecessary friction on the line running through the line tie, especially if there could be damage or corrosion on that line tie. You don't want to chafe, chafe it up or the heat friction could damage the line. And if it's a line that's kind of been soaked for a while, the more you pull on it when it's, it's cinching down, the longer that kind of knot section has to slide, the more it's going to create curly cues ahead of the line tie. So that, my friends, is your basic uni. You're going to go ahead and trim the tag, leaving about a quarter inch. And you can go a little bit less if you want to. Next up, we're going to go ahead now and tie the weedless variation. And if that was easy to tie, this is going to be just as easy. We're going to give ourselves, again, six to eight inches until we become efficient with it. Create that loop, just like so. Stand that loop next to the standing line make our four turns and make sure that tag end encompasses the standing line and the loop, just like so. Draw it semi-snug. You don't want it to go too crazy and cinch it up too tight. I'm going to draw the knot down towards the line tie. And before it gets snug, we're going to take our tag end, just like so, and stick it back through the remaining loop. It's at this point, you can draw the knot tight and pull that tag tight as well. Now you can really wrench down on that knot. Once you get to this point, you can now trim this tag end flush. You no longer have to leave any tag. That tag, in my experience, stays put. It doesn't want to come out. It won't catch grass. And when you're throwing spinner baits, around heavy vegetation or soft plastic paddle tails like your Keytex or even just finesse worms. Having no tag end will allow you to shed grass much, much better. Any kind of tag end that sticks out to the side or back up like the standard uni makes it very difficult to snap that grass off when you're working through vegetation. So this variation will catch you less grass and more bass or pretty much whatever else you're fishing for. Now, if you're wondering why with so many different knots out there that are actually stronger than the uni, why is the uni still an excellent knot to tie and a knot to tie very often? For me personally, 99% of the time I'm fishing braid to a leader. And if I'm not fishing an FG knot or a PR knot, if I'm fishing something like an Alberto, I kind of want to go with a knot that's a little bit weaker. So that way, if I do get hung up and break off, I'm not retying the entire leader, I'm just retying the terminal knot. 
And oftentimes I'm using leaders that are kind of overly strong and I'm using them for more uh, abrasion resistance. And having that weaker connection will make it easier to pop at, if I do get hung up. So with that being said, I hope you guys found this informative. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you're not already subscribed, do yourself a favor and check out all the other content I have on my channel. I think you'll find to do things a little bit differently. So until next time, guys, tight lines, and I'll see you soon.